Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a hungry cat game. In this game, a cat is trying to eat as many fish as possible. Each time you eat a fish, you get one point. And the objective is for you to catch as many fish as possible before the time runs out. So it's a very simple game. So let's get started. So first, you need to click on File, New. Go ahead and give your project a name. I'm going to call mine the Hungry Cat Game, but you can call it whatever you think would be appropriate. We're going to start by coding the cat. Click on the Events button, drag the green flag, then get a forever block from the control. We're going to go ahead and code that the cat will follow your mouse pointer forever. So you're going to go to Motion, find the point towards mouse pointer code block, put it there, and then we're going to tell it to move around four steps. Note, you can change the number here, and depending on the number, it will go faster or slower. So that's something you might want to play around with as you code. So I'm going to go ahead and try this code, and as you can see, the mouse, uh, not the mouse, the cat is now following my mouse. So that's that. Now we're going to go ahead and code and find a uh, cat's food. So in my case, I'm using a fish, but you can find whatever character you think is appropriate. I'm going to go ahead and use this fish. And we're going to go ahead and code this fish. We want it to show up on the screen. And when it gets eaten, we want it to hide. So let's go ahead and code that. So first, you're going to go to control, oh, I'm sorry, events, and you're going to get a green flag block. Um, this fish is a little bit too big for the cat, so I'm going to actually change the size. The way you can do that is you're going to go to the looks block, set size to, and I'm going to make it 50%, so it's going to be a little bit smaller. If you click this, you can see how small it's going to be. That looks pretty perfect. Then you're going to find the show block, put it there. So when this is clicked, it's going to show the fish. Now I'm going to drag a forever block. And I'm going to go ahead and get an if block right into the forever block. Now, we're going to get a sensing block now. So we're going to say if this fish is touching Sprite one, which is the cat, right? Then we're going to go ahead and um, add hide. And we're also, let's go ahead and test this. So here we go. We have, there we go. It hid. Now, I don't know about you, but this is kind of a boring game so far because once the fish is gone, the cat has nothing else to do. There's also no points, right? So we're going to have to add a few more things here. We're going to go ahead and create a variable. So you're going to go to orange, and I want you to click on make a variable. <clears throat> and I want you to go ahead and type in fish eaten. In this case, if you're using a different kind of food, you can put whatever food it is there. So now we have a little scoreboard here where it says fish eaten. So we're going to say if it touches the cat, if this fish touches the cat, we want it to change fish eaten by one, right? So now before it hides. So then now when we show this, right, it's going to actually increase my score by one. So that's great. Now, here's the other thing. Right now, once the fish is eaten, it's gone forever, right? There's no way of getting it back, and the game seems to be over. So what would make the game more challenging is if this fish reappears over and over in random places. So let's go ahead and coat that next. So we're going to add a few more blocks in here. So after it hides, we want to make the game wait for about two seconds. So let's drag a wait second block. I'm going to change this to two. And after we wait two seconds, we want this to go to a random position. So you're going to go to motion, find the go to random position block, put it under the wait two seconds block. And then finally, we want it to show up again. So we're going to go to looks, get the show block. 
and that should do it. Let's let's try it now. So I'm clicking the green flag. Okay, and you can see the computer knows to wait two seconds, and what, after it waits two seconds, the fish appears in a random position, and it makes the game far more interesting because now the cat has to chase wherever the fish is, right? So that's perfect. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and code a couple more things. Um, first of all, let's make a couple more fish because right now there's only one fish, but it will make the game more challenging and interesting if we had more than one fish. So you're going to go ahead and make a copy of this fish by right clicking the fish. Okay, until you see this window and you're going to hit duplicate. And what's really great about this is it makes a copy of not just the sprite, but all of the code that comes with it. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate um, this until I have five fish. And now let's try it, clicking the green flag. You can see here I'm eating all the fish. Okay. And it makes the game a lot more challenging and also interesting, right? So that's perfect. Now, the next thing that I want to add, I think you guys may notice that every time I click the green flag, my score keeps increasing, right? So there's actually no way for me to reset my score yet. So we're going to go ahead and add that uh, code now next. And so to do that, you're going to go back to the cat sprite, click on the cat sprite, and we're going to go ahead and click on events, drag the green flag here. And we're going to go back to variables and you're going to drag the set fish eaten to zero block. And what that's going to do is every time you click the green flag, it's going to set it back to zero. So it resets the game. Okay. So that's very simple. Now, um, the next thing we're going to add is a timer. Right now the game is set so that you can start and stop the game whenever you want, which is not very challenging, right? So we want to set a countdown timer that really challenges the player to hurry and get as many fish as they can before the time runs out. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and stay in the sprite one block, go to events, uh, drag out a when green flag clicked uh, block, and we're going to make a new variable. Okay, so go to variables and go ahead and click on make a variable. And we're going to call this one timer. Okay, and make sure it's for all sprites. Click OK. And you can see here it already um, created like a timer block. I'm going to click and drag this over here so it doesn't really cover any of the fish. Okay, right now you can tell that the timer is at zero. So we I want it to be a countdown timer. So I'm going to go ahead and um, drag the set variable block out. And instead of fish eaten, you're going to go to the drop down menu and go to timer and I'm going to set it to 20. Okay, so let's see. Now the timer is at 20, except the timer is still not running yet. So we need to add a few more codes, right? So I'm going to go ahead and next add a, we want the timer to run and change by, uh, go down by one second each time, right? So to do that, you're going to go to control drag a repeat until block, pop it right under the timer block, and we're going to now use an operator. So go to the green. You're going to drag a green blank equals block here. Pop it right in there. And we're going to go back to our variables, drag the timer block. Okay. And we're going to tell the computer you're going to repeat until the timer equals zero. So we're going to put some code in here and we want it to uh, count, down, count down by seconds, right? So we're going to go to control. Let's go to wait one second. It's going to wait one second and then it's going to decrease the time by negative one. So you're going to drag a change variable by block here and pop it right under the wait one seconds. Instead of fish eaten, you're going to click on the timer and we're going to change the timer to negative one. So basically what this is telling this, the computer is when we click the green flag, set the timer to 20 and you're going to wait one second and then change the timer by negative one. So you're going to count down from, neg uh, from 20, change negative one until the timer equals zero. So let's see if this works. I have it here. You can see the timer is running and going down, right? That's exactly what we wanted. And you can see as I'm dragging the cat, the fish are getting eaten and it's increasing my score by one. 
Okay, and the timer is running. And let's see if it stops at zero. And there we go. The timer has stopped at zero. Now the problem is, even if the timer is at zero, my cat can still eat fish, right? So we want to stop the game. So we, add, we need to add a few more blocks down here, okay? So we're going to add actually two more blocks, okay? So when the timer equals zero, we want to broadcast that the game is done. So you're going to go to events, drag the broadcast block, and we're going to make a new message, click on new message, okay? And we're going to say timer done we're going to broadcast that the timer is done and then we're going to stop all the sprites so we're going to go to control and drag the stop all block here and so this is going to tell the computer that when the timer is zero we're going to broadcast timer done and we're going to stop all the sprites okay so now it should actually stop the game once the time reaches zero there's one more thing we need to add, and that is we're going to add a high score bar, okay? I think players will be more challenged if they see what the high score is, and they're going to be motivated to beat that high score, right? So we need to display that high score. So we're going to actually uh, create a new variable here. Go ahead and go to variables. Cr click on make a variable, and we're going to call this high score. And again, make this for all sprites. And there it is. I'm going to drag it again right here so the fish aren't going to get covered. And then we're going to, um, we want the computer to display the highest score, right? Only if someone beats the high score, we want it to change. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to events. And we're going to uh, get the when I receive block here. So Go to the drop down menu and you're going to um, click on timer done. So uh, when I receive the broadcast message that the timer is done, then we want the computer to recognize what was the number of fish eaten and is it did it beat the high score, right? So we're going to go to control and you're going to click on the if blank then block. Drag it and we're going to get an operator. Okay, go to green. And we're going to use the blank or blank block. So go ahead and drag that, pop it right in there. And we're going to do add two things here. So first, I want you to drag the blank equals block and pop it into the first, oops, didn't go, pop it into the first notch here, inside here. And we're going to sit and go to variables. And I want you to get fish eaten variable, pop it into the first block here and we're going to set this to zero okay get another operator block this time get the blank is less than blank block right here and you're going to pop it into the second blank here and again um, we're going to go back to variable and click on high score drag it to the first uh first blank here and then drag the fish eaten block and drag it to the second blank here Okay, and then one more block you're going to get, and that's the set blank to whatever. So you're going to grab this set block, and we're going to go to the drop down menu and click on high score. And also drag the fish eaten variable here. Okay, so let me explain what this is saying. So when the game is over and the computer gets the broadcast timer done. It's going to read this code. If the fish eaten is equal to zero or the high score is actually less than the number of fish eaten in that game, then the computer is going to set the high score to the number of fish eaten in the game. So it's going to change that high score to that new high score. Okay, so let's test this out. Here we go. Let's see if it will read the high score as the highest score. So we're just playing this, catching as many fish as possible. There we go. And five more seconds until the timer runs out. Okay, and you can see here when the timer stopped, 
uh, mine was the highest score because previously it was zero. So it took my score and put it into the high score. And if anybody else plays it, and if they beat my high score, their score is going to replace mine. Okay. And that's it. That is the basic uh, code for making a hungry cat game. So go ahead, have fun with this. Um, you can mod it in several ways. You can change how fast the mouse moves. You might want to add some sound effects and music. Um, to make it a little bit more interesting. You also might want to add a background. So go ahead, mod it, have fun, and make it your own. And I hope you found this helpful. Thanks.